Thank you. I kind of like the senator thing better. Yeah, I, I hope that's a premonition. Yes, yes. But, uh, yes. Yeah, prophecy. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Let me stay told us. Speak it to life. First of all, I want to tell everybody the sound of my voice, and I'm somewhat of a history buff. Uh, what of the law? You know, the history on this island is something that we all ought to be proud of something that we all ought to talk about day in and day out because it brings in perspective of whence we came, who we are, and where we're headed. So every time I come on out this island, in this area, it's almost like my spirit is rejuvenated. And it's always a blessing as I humble myself before you. And I'm proud to be here once again. Now, to the people of Watermelon, Jones Island, and all the other sea islands. If you're in here today, I'm here at the request of Mr. Wright. Raise your hand. And Miss Militant, where are you, Bertha? Militant. Yeah, let's give these two people a round of applause. I remember when they first contacted me, people, and they asked me for my advice. The first thing I told both of them, number one, I'm a team player. Everybody is equal because we're out here trying to justify and solve the problems that's clear and present. Whether it's Charleston County or the other 45 counties in this great state we call South Carolina, which is four million plus some odd God-fearing citizens, we're all on the same road. The problem is, how do we achieve that goal while we're trying to travel down that road? Because we will have what we call difference of opinions, because we're human. And what I told them is, look, I love what you're doing, I'm going to pray for you because when you're out here doing something then you're going to get criticized then the rumors will start because you are about something you, you, you know once we can accept that and understand that then and only then you're going to see a change for the better so we had our meeting and I admired both of them because number one, they didn't thought less of themselves or more of themselves to say and look back and say, you know, I want to do something. I want to reach out. I want to make a difference in my community. I want to move forward. Now, in the state of South Carolina, and everybody sound of my voice know we're dealing with two issues. Domestic violence. You know where the state is on the totem pole. Gun violence. You know where the state is on the totem pole. You know that at the state level, and I'm talking from the government perspective now, we have our leaders starting with the top executive official, our governor. You know, you, you can't preach guns and promote guns and don't think God is not listening. You know, those who pick up the weapons will surely do what? And perish. So, we got to understand what we're up against. When you look at the statistics, you look at the gun violence, domestic violence, in domestic violence, guns are what? The weapons of choice. You see how the two correlates? They're combined. That's the weapon of choice. You see, I can survive a brick by the grace of God. But when a person picks up a gun, okay, that's the weapons of, of, of choice. That's when I have the real issue. Because look what we've done in the, in the state government. The concealed weapon permit. Somebody can be in here right now. I'm not talking about save our laws. They have a right to carry weapons. 
That's the law. But I don't want to live in a society if somebody walks through that door with an attitude or a man with somebody in this room and they have a concealed weapons permit. I don't want to do that. I don't want to live in that kind of society. So in, in South Carolina, we're promoting, and I always tell people this, and, I, and, and Pastor Dixon, he always gave me five minutes. But <laughs> this, this, this is what we're up against. It's three, kind, it's three kinds of people in society. And my father always taught me, and I'm from a family of 11. I'm the youngest of the boys. He always taught us this. It's three kinds of people in this world. It's, you have those people who make things happen. Then you have those people who watch things happen. And then you have those people who wonder what the heck just happened. <laughs> and I'm not saying that to be facetious. I'm saying that on a serious note. Because when these two people took it upon themselves, to cause everybody here to be here today. We got three classes of people. And I'll let God be the judge of that. Because I can guarantee you what we've experienced, and I say when we, raise your, raise your hand, Butch Kennedy, where are you? Raise your hand. You see this gentleman over here? He has an organization. And they're on top of the issues of domestic violence helping with unemployment, those people who, young people who are released from prison, Mr. Butch Kennedy, along with Pastor Dixon, and all these other good people out there, I work with them because they're out here, those are the people who make things happen. And what I told these two people, Middleton and Wright, then you're gonna have the other two classes of people. Those are the ones who watch things happen. Those are your critics. Oh, oh I, don't, I don't like him. I, all, all she wants to do is, you say, that's the second class. And then you have the third class. And they're home sleeping right now. <laughs> About to get up at 8 o'clock and go out to a nightclub. Are getting ready to have a party. Cocaine, marijuana, drugs all, of all sorts. Those are the people who wonder what just happened. That's what we're faced with in our society, people. But when we can gather together like this, and I got it written down, I had it on my scroll because I'm closing now. This is what we need to do. First, we got to get committed. And then once we're committed, we got to get involved. And then once we're involved, we got to go out and tell the story. Tell the story. Because it's going to be a story of productive measures, results. It's not going to be a story about why these people are killing each other. Why are the young people killing each other? Why is domestic violence something that South Carolina government and the federal government want to turn their back to? You see, it would be a good story because you are about something. So, Middleton, right, take the criticism. The road is not going to be easy. You understand? What's my man's name? Mr. Mack. Mr. Mack, take the criticism. The road is not going to be easy. All right, now. Can we see what's before us? and realize what we have to do. Yeah. As an elected official, I ask all of them to bring voter registration. If we had the voters turn out like we should, you wouldn't have, you would not have a person in an office who did not care. Right. Did not care about the poor. Did not care about the homeless. Did not care about domestic violence. Just don't care. <coughs> You would have people in there who care about all these things and want, they want to move forward. So you have to first get out, register people to vote, and then turn out the vote in numbers. And here we are today, on the 50th anniversary, commemorating a great black leader, Malcolm X, 
In his favorite term, war. You can clap because the brother deserves it. His favorite term, wars. We are all here in the sight of God. And we are all brothers and sisters. No matter what color, no matter what creed. Because we're all going to die one day. Yeah. Now, how many pastors we have in here? Raise your hand. Let me see the pastors in here. Okay. Y'all stand up. I want to see you. Because see, yeah, this, this is the yeah. mission trail that we're on today. Yeah, yeah. This is the mission trail that we're on today. Yeah, yeah. Y'all remain standing for a minute because I want you to know politicians take a second seat to you ladies and gentlemen, reverends, and I, I want you to know that. We take a second seat. If I'm in your backyard, I'm going to recognize you because we depend on you and we need each other. Yes, sir. Yes. I want everybody to understand that. Yes, sir. We're on the same mission, on the same road, and we need your help to galvanize this community and all other communities. Because Dr. King was right. What impacts one area anywhere impacts all areas everywhere. So don't give me, don't give me this about your backyard and my backyard. I don't own no backyard. I'm not gonna own my grandsire. I don't own nothing on this earth because I came in with nothing. But these gentlemen and these ladies will take us where we need to go, the government takes a back seat to you any day. I just want you to know, let's give them a big round of applause. Yes, yes, you can have a seat. This, this meeting should be used as a benchmark. And Pastor Dixon and everybody, Mr. Mack, we agree that we're definitely on a mission. Is it going to be easy? No. It's going to be hard? Yes. Will there be sacrifice? Yes. Will you get criticized? Well, you already know that. I'm not going to answer that. That's the mission trail. In this area, the last time you took the census, it was 2,000 some odd, two, well over 2,700 people out on Watermelon. What you have going on, Islanders, Let's talk one minute of economics. Years ago, when I was in the high school, and I used to love to do research, knowledge, you had your development started on Keybrook, Keywong, and Seabrook. Seabrook Island. We had predicted in the early 70s that the development would soon come back this way. Yeah. And now, it has come to fruition. You're living it. But what that development and all these developments going on around you, remember one thing. He who controls the money <laughs> controls his destiny on earth. When I, talk, when I say destiny, I'm talking about economic destiny. I'm not talking spiritual. But you should have an impact. And we have to have that pendulum that's swaying in the center. And that pendulum now is swaying too far to the right. We shouldn't see no homeless people out here. We shouldn't see people wanting to pay their gas bills. We shouldn't see islanders wanting for anything when you have all these hotels and all these blessed souls, these rich people, out here and not caring. I got a problem with that. So if you own land, if you own land, because that's something God ain't giving up no more. That's right. <laughs> Come on, you better hold on to it. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't, then you're going to suffer in the end, and your family will suffer, and your community will suffer. Hold on to what you've got. Develop your own land. Quit getting these at the door in the mail, and that money looks cool. The devil is crafty and he's busy. Develop your own property. If you don't, if you don't know how, and that's another thing I had down here, start inviting your local politics or your elected officials. We know how to do development. We know it. So invite ourselves to talk to you. But hold on to your property. Once you give that up, that's all she wrote. 
Okay, let them come in on your terms. Amen. So you won't have to leave on theirs. All right. So let's get, I mean, let's talk straight. You know why we have crime coming this way now? And, I, and listen to me, you know why we got crime? In our society, as people come and live in our communities, they bring with them demands. Rich people, middle class people, poor people. When you look at the area of drugs, the demand goes up when the population increases. If you don't believe me, you Google it. I got the statistics. And that's what we're seeing, crimes of all sorts. Drugs are coming in from I-95 off the Florida coast, on down through Allendale. Y'all fix that. <laughs> no, I got a heavy voice, that's what I meant. But drugs were coming through I-95. When I was on city council, we knew it because we had to send extra officers out. I think it was uh, Walter Barrow, Walt, what's, what's that stretch? That we had to, we had to, actually had to patrol those areas. The Colleton County, that's right. So now you got the drug demand that's up in your communities. So when your demand for drugs go up, now the teenagers, if they go up and they solicit your sons and your daughters to be runners. You see, they fly the drugs in, bring it by boat, air, drop them off at the shores, and then it pumps in your community. Don't ever try to sell me on black on black crime. That's the type of, you know, read the books. Because when my white Italian, or my Italian brothers, and my white sisters and brothers fly the boats in, you know, drive the drugs in by boats, fly the drugs in by air, that's a connection to everybody's problem. Don't give me no more black on black crime, I can't stand that. I never picked up a, a dictionary and read where a black man on a gun factory. <laughs> a black man on a Cessna plane that's flying tons of drugs in and, and bringing it in on submarines. But I do know this. We are all in this together. That's my point. Ain't no such thing as white on white crime. Now let's get real. A human being is a human being. That's right. And even Dr. King told us, not by the color of the skin, yes, okay. but by the content of one's character. Yeah. You gotta understand what the brother was talking about. Yeah. Get off of that color crap. If you bring a gun in the community and it kills somebody, then you need to go after that person who had the gun to pull the trigger. Yeah. Don't give me that thing about mental people. You ever got mad? My dad used to get mad. I thought he had a mental problem <laughs> when I was little, because I was thinking foolishness. Yeah, because he used to rectify us right there. Right. Mm -hmm. And my point is, people, I can be a gun owner and be the soundest guy you ever knew. But somewhere, somewhere along in life, something's going to do you what? Take you off. Yeah. At that point, you are considered not sane. And y'all have done that. You know why I know? Because you're human. That, but that's the third thing I had. Last thing, and then we're going to move forward. Get sophisticated with technology. The law officers that know me, they know me. I promote cameras. Also, I, I promote drones by any means necessary. We have to fight crime. We have to take a bite out of crime. I've been to too many funerals and that's both law officers, teenagers, your mothers and daughters, the caskets are too small. And I made a pact with myself. I told my girlfriend, you know, I'm tired of going to funerals. I gotta get out here and make a difference. And that's why you see me out here. I'm no better than nobody in this room. But the funerals are too many. We're leaving this earth too soon. The book says, be fruitful, and multiply, honor thy mother and thy father, and you will live what? Long upon the earth. That is so simple. So people, you know why I'm here today? Because I love you. You know why Pastor Dixon and all these people are doing what they're doing? Because we love you. Now, we leave you in love.
at the end of the day, but we will have a continuance for another meeting. So with that, I greet you in love. Let's move forward with the program. God bless you.